Hi everyone, this is Dr. Lewis just providing you with some travel safety tips for whenever you're traveling away from home. So the first thing that I want to cover in this presentation is how to check for bed bugs. I'm going to give you a video demonstration on how to do that. The next thing would be what to do if you actually encounter bed bugs in a hotel or a place away from home. We don't want you to take those home with you and we definitely don't want those coming into your home and causing you extra problems. Then finally, we're just going to cover some different ways to protect yourself whenever you're staying in a hotel or an Airbnb. Um, the first thing is checking for cameras, making sure that nobody's watching you, never announce your room number aloud, and then just being extra cautious of your surroundings. In my previous classes, I've noticed that our students are learning all about hospitality, but they don't really know how to protect themselves whenever they travel. So here are some quick tips on how to protect yourself whenever you're traveling in hotels. So my first one is how to check for bed bugs. Bed bugs were actually eradicated from the United States until several years ago whenever we saw an increase in international travel. So international travelers actually brought them back into the United States and now that's something that we have to deal with in our industry. So what you need to do is you need to tear apart the bed essentially. So tear back all of these sheets and I do apologize, this is actually a stair room. I checked this whenever we moved into this room a few days ago, but just for video purposes, I'm tearing it apart again. So you're gonna tear back all of the sheets and actually there's our missing remote. So you're gonna take even the fitted sheet off. This bed actually has a casing on it, which actually is a really good thing because it protects the bed, but it makes it a little bit harder to check. So if this did not have this on here, you would immediately see the seams, but because it does, it makes it a little bit harder. So you're gonna look around this and see if you can find a zipper. If you can't get the zipper open, what you need to do is now check the box spring. So this one's in pretty bad shape, but you can see the seams are clean. If this bed was dirty, you would see that there were little black specks all the way up and down the seam. But this one's clean even though it looks really bad. So that's a good thing. Um, the other thing that you want to do is you want to actually check the upholstered furniture. So the furniture, you're going to look in the seams. So if you can kind of zoom in here and see on the seams, you would see also those little black specks which would actually be the essential uh, feces of the bugs and also potential eggs. So thankfully we don't have any. In the video, I told you that there are a couple things to look for in the seams on upholstery or on the mattress itself. On the left hand side, the picture at the top of this slide is actual bed bug feces. That is leftover blood that they have excreted after they have bitten somebody. Bed bugs are very much so like a tick, however, they don't actually attach permanently to the body in which they bite. On the right hand side, those are actual bed bugs. Those are very small baby bed bugs that are just kind of laying in waiting, um, waiting on somebody to, to get into that mattress for them to have dinner. So if you see either of these things, get out of that room very quickly. So what do you do if you've actually encountered a hotel room with bed bugs? If you are fearful that you have been bitten or that you may carry these bed bugs home, the first thing you want to do is approach the front desk for help. Ask if they can help you in the situation. Make them aware of the infestation and see what type of customer service they are willing to provide to you. If by chance they offer you some type of cleaning service, whether that be dry cleaning or if they're willing to do the laundry for you in-house, allow them to do it because they should know how to properly treat for bed bugs. If they do not offer any type of cleaning service, then you need to use heat. And heat is the only thing that is going to truly kill the bed bugs because they cannot survive in high temperatures. So there's a couple things that you need to do to protect yourself. The first thing that you need to do is pack up all your belongings, leave them in that suitcase, and take them home with you. Of course, you can't necessarily leave them behind unless you just want to forgo all of your belongings, but most of us want to actually keep our stuff. 
So what we need to do is we need to make sure that once we get home, we do not take our suitcase inside of your home. If you take it inside of your home, more than likely you are just inviting those bed bugs into your house with you. So once you get to your house, unpack outside. I know it seems a little crazy, but unpacking outside is the best way to make sure that you're not carrying them into your home. So put all of your belongings inside of garbage bags. When you pack into these garbage bags, you should be packing in dry clothes or dry cloth or textured materials that can be safe to put into a drying, um, a household dryer. When you put them into the, the garbage bags, make sure that you're tying them airtight. So don't use just the drawstrings on the trash bag. You truly have to knot it off and tie it so that it is airtight and it's essentially helping to suffocate the bugs to some degree. So once you've gotten that out of the way, what you're going to do is you're going to take the laundry in by loads. Take one load at a time and put that directly into the dryer on the highest heat cycle for at least 90 minutes. Run that through with dry clothes in there because they are dry. It's not going to hurt your clothing. And once you've ran that dry cycle, you've essentially killed them at that point. So now you would just launder like normal. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about is just protecting yourself whenever you're visiting a hotel or an Airbnb in general. In the past year or so, we've had a lot of traction with Airbnbs as this new way to travel, and a lot of people, especially the younger travelers, are really liking the idea of staying in Airbnbs. They are great, don't get me wrong. However, they are not quite as safe as a hotel would be, and that's for different reasons because you're actually staying in someone's home or their residence. So they have a lot more freedom to do what they choose to in their home compared to a hotel that is franchised and has standards that they have to uphold. So what we're finding is that there are a lot of extra cameras that are being hidden inside of Airbnbs and even hotel rooms. So this is something that we need to be aware of and be cautious of. So whenever you check into a hotel or an Airbnb, be aware of your surroundings. Look for extra little red lights that may indicate um, that it's a camera. A lot of times they will hide these cameras in very common areas, but they're so discreet that we wouldn't notice them. So make sure that you're checking your smoke alarms or your smoke detectors, your alarm clocks, even your night lights in the bathrooms for any type of red light that might indicate something isn't just supposed to be there. So if you see that, make sure that you report that to um, whether it be Airbnb, the front desk, whoever could potentially help you in that situation. So the next thing that I want to talk about is my personal pet peeve whenever you're staying in a hotel. This doesn't necessarily apply to Airbnb. But a hotel or a front desk employee, a housekeeper, anybody on staff in a hotel should never announce your room number aloud. This is a safety feature that is so simple but is oftentimes not actually utilized. It's just simple for us to go down to the front desk and say, I need a new key. And they'll ask you, well, what is your room number? And then we just blurt it out. So we have to do just as much due diligence on our side to not actually say it out loud. Make sure that they are double checking your identity. If by chance you do need to have something um, refreshed as far as a key, make them ask for your ID so that they can make sure that the person that is asking for the key should actually be in your hotel room. This is for your protection. Um, if by chance they do say it aloud, somebody could easily follow you to your room or do greater harm. So we always want to make sure that we are not announcing our room numbers out loud. The last thing I want to touch on is just making sure that you're always aware of your surroundings. Whenever we're away from home, we tend to somewhat zone out. We've got a lot of things on our mind. We're looking at our phones. We're just not really truly paying attention. So. Always be aware of your surroundings. If at any time you ever feel uncomfortable in a hotel or in an Airbnb or at a resort, maybe you feel as if you're being watched or being followed, go with your gut instinct. So always be aware of what's going on around you. If by chance you notice that you're being followed or someone is watching you, you can move. You can make that situation easier for yourself. 
Never go directly to your room in that situation. Try to distract them and try to mislead them away from your direction where you're actually going to be staying. Also, make sure that you let the staff at the hotel know so that they can also be aware of the situation and put a little bit of extra foresight into being aware and protecting you because you have that right. You deserve that protection. So make sure that you are completely aware of your surroundings. Don't be so naive whenever you're away from home. All right, so those are my three biggest travel tips for whenever you are staying away from home and traveling outside of your normal environment. Hopefully they prove helpful for you and you start utilizing those every time you travel away from home. With that said, enjoy your travels and be wanderlust.